This is Elijo. Uh, I haven't started it yet, uh, but it does seem like the kind of game that is going to be right up my alley. It's a, it's a stealth game. I believe it's set in sort of Wild West era Mexico. Uh, and you play a small child uh, who folks have said is actually more convincing as a stealth character than a lot of the characters you play in other games because you actually are small enough to hide from a lot of the folks that are trying to catch you. So let's see what this experience is like. Again, I haven't even started this yet, so uh, we're going to go through the tutorial and everything together. As always, playing a bird game. Hey. Oh, wait, awesome Twitch dude, by the way, mentions that I should try out the tourist. Uh, looking at this sort of isometric perspective might have been what, uh, what what gave him that idea. Actually, uh, I've already played the tourist uh, a little bit. I actually I did a I did a video about it um, several a couple months ago, I guess. Uh, so yeah, I, I played through I think the entire first level in that video. So so if anybody's interested in checking it out, uh, you know I'll I'll try to put a when when I put this on YouTube, I'll try to put a uh, I'll try to put a link up at the top of the screen for that. You'll get to see if I remembered to do that. Okay, so I'm a sneaky little boy, looks like. I just automatically moving in a, in a, with a sneaky animation. That's adorable. Oh, it looks like I can only sprint a very short distance before my little radial stamina meter gives out. Oh, has something bad happened? I don't know if you caught that, but my prompt to push the interact button was in the bottom right hand of the screen. <laughs> and rather than being right in the middle of the action, which is kind of unusual, right? Normally they'll put the button right where they know your eyes already are. Hiding it at the bottom right part of the screen, it does, it keeps from obstructing your view of the, uh, of, of the actual art. Oh, am I not allowed to go this way? Oh, am I up on a cliff? I, th okay. First, let me finish my previous thought. So, um, you know, there's a trade-off there, right? Because if you put the icon right in the middle of the screen where your character is, it obscures the art and it sort of interrupts sort of the 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 look of 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 the world. Um, and so, I can understand somebody wanting to avoid that. But if you put it way down in the bottom right corner of the screen, where it's easy to not even notice, like have it be so far in your peripheral vision that you literally can't see anything changing down there, um, it can be hard to sort of figure out what you're supposed to do. So. We had a similar thing with um, when you when you're when you've got our menus up in State of Decay 2, most of the instructions for how to use the menus and stuff are hidden in the bottom right hand corner of the screen to keep them out of the way, um, and also to have a very consistent place where no matter what menu we built, we always had a place to stick those, which is really good than have that's a lot better than having to sort of reinvent a new place to stick your button prompts every time you make a new menu. Having a consistent piece you can add to every single menu that just handles that uh, is really nice. That was a really good innovation and, and a really good uh, choice on the part of our of, of our UI designer. Um, but it's got a trade-off, which is if the button prompts aren't in your face, it's really easy to miss what potential actions you could do. And if you're trying to use that to sort of teach people what they are, what they're capable of, um, it's really easy for them to miss stuff. Speaking of missing stuff, it is really hard to tell that this shadowed sand is on a completely different level from the shadow stand on a uh, sand on the above on the cliff above, which is you know I think you got to be cautious of when you're working with a with simple art like this, where it's like you know there really is sort of a discrete number of colors on the screen. The shadows tend to be pretty harsh as, as there's like harsh divisions between the lit and the unlit side of an object uh, that reduces the number of colors, which means little shades of difference like that will just kind of disappear. Okay, so yeah, you can see again the interact button is like way the crap over there <laughs> and it's really easy to miss the fact that I can interact with my mom I assume this is my mom <gasps> I've got a bird I love my bird oh that, bir that bird just attacked my mom okay so I can hold RB oh, just like an Assassin's Creed 
I can have my bird fly around to tell me where things are. How are the birds communicating with these people? Like, that's my, um... You know, I understand. You can totally, if you want to, make a uh, fantasy world where, uh, you know, people can communicate with birds and use them to sort of scout terrain. But it weirds me out that they never explain how it works. Like, in Assassin's Creed, is, is Eivor, like, psychically communicating with the bird? Can she speak with the bird? She does talk to the bird. Like, what's, how is she getting information from the bird? And similarly, how is Eliho finding out where, where, um, what, oh, by the way, I am actually really interested in the fact that it looks like I only can see sight radiuses of enemies when I'm in this mode, and I can't see it while I'm sneaking. Um, it's an interesting choice. Uh, different from a lot of other games like this, but we'll have to see how it plays out. Oh, okay, so that problem with the art, the fact that they've got this very distinct, like, some things are lit, some things are in shadow, and there's always a really harsh line between the two of them, I thought it was just an artistic decision uh, to have this sort of si simple art style, that, and, and it was kind of biting them when they were trying to make things contrast with each other that didn't easily contrast, but this is actually... It's going to be a mechanical part of the game, which, ab like, I love that, that, that their art style is framed around the fact that they needed to have a clear line between shadow and light so that you could figure out where you're safe and where you're not safe. And so they, it looks like they built their entire art style around that need, which is really cool. The tank points out this is like Untitled Goose Game. Oh, wait, crouching? Oh, wait, oh crap, I, I'm sitting there talking and I missed that thing. Oh, so crouch is X. Okay. So can I crouch when I'm not next to an obstacle? Oh, did I just fail at something? Okay, so it looks like crouching is an obstacle thing. Oh, what? What is going on? Oh, oh. Right. It's a scarecrow with a sight, with a sight range. That's what I've been hitting. Okay. It's not very clear that that's what's going on. Like, I'm, I'm getting the, the negative feedback from having failed, but I didn't understand how I was failing, which is which can be a problem in UX. If somebody's going to fail at something, they have to know exactly why, or they're just going to get frustrated. I had, I had an experience like that with uh, Cyberpunk earlier today. I was trying to engage with a sort of random combat that, was, uh, that out-leveled me, and I kept dying, having no clue why, and eventually I just went away. Okay, so something's going on. Looks like we lost our farm, and we're sad. But I got my slingshot, so, you know, we're all right. It's just uh, me, my mom, and our horse. Now we're moving to, uh, to a new town? Do we have to sneak into this new town? Keep this picture. Bury it. No one can know. So are we... Are we hiding? Okay, so it seems like we have a dead family member. Probably our dad. And then we were driven from our home. We have to bury the picture of our father. And now we're being raised by some kind of harsh guy. Probably for our own safety? while my mom goes and takes care of business. It's interesting, like, they've decided to tell this story without dialogue uh, of any kind, which means I have to try to glean from subtle hints what's going on. But I think I understand it. Like, there is some kind of... Oh, yikes. Hello? Seems like my dad made the wrong people angry, got killed... They're still after our family. I'm being kept safe here. My mom could be in some kind of trouble. And I'm worried about it. I think it looks like I don't want to be protected here and kept safe. I want to be helping with the action. Okay, so the bird's helping me see <laughs> whether or not I'm in trouble here. But uh, if I was in trouble, the bird would also probably be making noise and... <laughs> Making it worse. Alright. 
so funny that I'm just always sneaking. I'm, oh, interesting. Okay, so I thought, oh, maybe these guys don't have sight cones. Maybe they're not hostile. They do, but the sight cones only show up in the light. So when they're looking in shadow, they can't see me. Um, and so they don't get the sight cones. Interesting. Yeah. Okay, looks like I can't jump down. Okay, so while she's looking away, or he, she, I don't know. It's interesting to be completely safe in shadow. That kind of reminds me of a splinter cell. I always, I always liked that about Splinter Cell. They were just really straight. I mean, even though it's not realistic to just be able to hide in a shadow and have no one ever see you, uh, especially if you've got three glowing lights on your forehead. But I didn't appreciate it for the realism. I appreciated it. I appreciated it for the fact that uh, it was consistent and predictable. And I never had to wonder. Oh, he can see me. Oh. You can see me there. Okay. Okay, hold on. Okay, so the sparkly blue stuff. Is that... Is that checkpoints? Is that what that means? Okay, so let's watch this guy. Okay, so it looks like maybe I was just a little bit in the light. And maybe instead of going behind his back, what I wanted when he's... Uh, over on the right, I want to go behind his back when he's moving to the left. Because that'll give me room to get more out of the way. So I should not go now, because then I won't be able to get out of his way in time to avoid getting seen. Instead, I should pop out here and run while he's further away. And I'm in a place Oh, okay, I'm getting a okay, I'm getting a button pro okay, I need to be standing here, I guess, just exactly here. <sighs> Truant, start your journey. So the tank, I never actually played Spinner Cell uh, Chaos Theory, though I, I am a big fan of uh, some of the people who worked on that. Um, like uh, Clint Hawking, for instance, one of the one of the major people behind uh, Watch Dogs Legion. Um but because uh, the original Splinter Cell, this actually kind of relates to my recent experience with Immortals. Um, I actually hit a bug where um, the game crashed while it was saving and it corrupted my save file when I was like 80 or 90% through the original Splinter Cell. And I was so frustrated. I didn't just quit the game. I quit the franchise until like the fourth entry in the franchise. And I ended up still really loving Splinter Cell as a franchise. And I still do. But I, I just couldn't bear to, to play the game again after I had suffered something that was that frustrating. Oh, oh no, oh no, oh no. Um, what's this guy gonna do? Oh, I can hide in curtains? So it's cool that they let me just sort of discover this mechanic. Um, it is still kind of tough to discover a mechanic when the prompts are so hidden. Oh, so he actually looks he actually looks in that curtain. Does he look in this one? I hope he doesn't look in this one. So he looks in the curtain on his way to the right, but not on his way back. So I think I can still hide here as long as he's on his way back. Okay, so it's interesting. They seem to have very, very locked in uh, movement patterns. Okay, so that guy talks to his buddy, and then looks to the side. Can I get all the way across in time? Just barely. What about these guys? Okay, looks to the side. So, okay, I, looks like I can get down the ladder still in shadow. But then what? 
Okay, so yeah. Their sight cones are overlapping here. It's terrible. I think I need to, as soon as, as soon as the right hand guards look, goes, okay, I need to dive out right now and then hide here while the uh, towel steward uh, crosses this way and then run. Okay. Oh, how do I get by this person? Cutscenes is how. Sneaking down here. Okay, people moved on. That's good for me. I'm assuming that's a checkpoint. And then... That person's looking back and forth. Okay, let's hide by the bed. Okay, cool. I don't know if I'm actually going the direction I want to go right now, but oh, there's a nice little girl there. She's not creating a sight cone. I don't know if I want to be here, though. I mean, she seems nice. Can I talk to her? Yes, I can. Child inspiration. Motivate children to strengthen their will and to sometimes receive small gifts for your quest. Okay. I just inspired, inspired a child by hopping on a bed. Oh, now she's having fun instead of doing work. Is that just... Is that okay? <laughs> am I glad I did that? I assume I am. Seems like no one notices what she's doing. Okay, so maybe that was just an optional thing. Run, 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 run. Oh, I... Okay, here's the problem. I can't... Oh, I didn't realize there was a gap on the right side. All right, so I did need to go this way. Because of that guy. All right. There we go. Okay, that's what I needed to do. Oh, oh crap. This guy's got a lantern. Seems bad. Oh, nope. Doesn't seem like it's actually doing anything to the light. Okay, cool. Wandering in a circle, though. I, oh, I'm trying to get to that hole. All right. I think... I think I need to go the opposite direction that this guy's going, because there's so many people the other way. Oh. Um, oh, nope, that didn't work. Okay, I'm surprised I didn't just instantly fail. So, okay, I think I can make it. So that uh, they'll be very close to me, though. I'm gonna, okay. I'm gonna try making it to that bed. All right. Okay. No, that worked. Enter. All right. Cool. We did it. Uh, the take is, is uh, comparing this to Plague Tale, which yeah, it was another game with, that involved a lot of uh, a lot of stealth and involved a uh, sneaky little boy. What's this? And I played it a while ago too. If you wanted to look for it on my channel, it's it's a pretty cool game. Very well done. Very very slick for a game that's made by, I think, a pretty small team. So I can throw stones. Hold RT to aim and A to throw. So, for instance... Oh, look, the towels. They jumble around when I walk through them. Oh, that's adorable. Okay, so... So he's going to look there, and then I can run past him. All right, where am I trying to get? I guess either down the stairs to the left or the stairs to the right. I don't think I've got a lot of hope of getting down the stairs to the right. That guy is pretty 
bunch of garden stuff, except... Can I get into the... Hmm. Okay, that didn't seem like... Okay, yeah, I actually was able to get past that. Cool. Oh, this might be an optional place. I'm going to inspire this child. Is there going to be a unique animation for each child inspiration? Because that suggests a pretty big animation team. <laughs> or at least a very efficient and clever animation team. Okay. So, I don't know if this was really the best direction to go. Okay, that guy can see everything over there. If I can go around behind him, that guy's going back and forth. Yeah, it looks like when he turns around right here, that's going to be a window I can take. But where do I actually want to go? Oh, there's another child to inspire up there. I wonder if I can toss rocks to distract people that are on different levels from me. Let's try to find out. Alright, so let this guy go through one more cycle. And we'll sneak around behind him. And then, I believe he turns to face downwards. Yes, okay, good. So can I throw a rock upstairs? I think maybe I cannot. Okay, so if I can't throw the rock up there, I think that means that if I want to inspire that kid, I've got to go all the way around. Um... It might be easy to think of that as annoying, <laughs> but I mean, or, or, or more unnecessary, but because, you know, I mean, we don't believe in half-assing it around here. One thing I do appreciate, by the way, is the fact that um, moving at my normal, like, I, I'm allowed to move my normal speed. I don't have to, like, force myself to, um, to walk slowly, like, sort of go through a, a, like a laborious process, or, or just sort of a, an attention-consuming process to, uh, keep myself going at the right speed. I can just move at full tilt, and full tilt is sneaky speed, which is appropriate for a sneaky game. Wait a minute. That uh, guy can see that whole thing. Let's, um... Hey, you. Look over there. Oh, my goodness. What could that be? Oh. Similarly. Let's see if we can get that guy to look over there. Oh, no! Ah! I got got! Okay, how was I supposed to... Oh, no. No, I don't want to be here. I wonder if there's a closer checkpoint that I can go to. I didn't succeed in triggering this time, but maybe I can trigger next time. Is there any blue sparkles around here anywhere? <sighs> okay. So let's get this guy to look that way. Wait, oop. I keep thinking releasing it is going to cause the rock, but that is not how it works. Okay, so let's strategize a bit here. So the problem is, what is my problem? This guy, he's going to turn around and come back after he's done investigating whatever he wants to investigate. He's going to turn around and come back, and when he turns around to come back, he's very likely to see me. Oh, that vase! That's got a dot over. I bet I can hide in that vase. That's 
yeah, the tank is pointing at the same thing that jar is, is what he calls it. But yeah, same deal. So, okay, let's do this. So let's say, hello. Oh, right. We got to get it. He got to get him within the, within the sphere. What? What is this? Mm. Hide X. Okay, so I pushed the A button initially because I knew that was the interact button, but I needed the X button. Again, not having the prompts right in the middle of the screen does make it a challenge for me to just automatically realize what I need to do. <gasps> I inspired the child. So looks like there's one more child I can inspire in this level. Eve, eh, not close enough. Get a little bit closer. We're like, hey, look over here, man. Wait, I mean, push the A button. Okay. Hiding. Okay, so he looks to the side when the other guy's walking. Okay, I think I might need to inspire washboard guy. Not inspire, uh, distract washboard guy. In order to gain the ability to go down that rock wall. Okay, let's go this way. I think I'm going to handle it from this side. I'm not sure exactly how, though. I think, well, actually... Yeah, I think if I just say, hey, look over there. Mm -hmm. Oh, he's looking. At, he didn't go anywhere. Interesting. Okay, let's, let's do that again. Okay, that time you left. I wonder what I did wrong the first time. Okay. Maybe I hit it too close to him or something? Yeah. He just narrowly missed getting caught there. Okay, it looks like my destination might be that hole? At least it looks like the last destination I had. Oh, but there's a kid. Okay. I want to get that kid. So, let's let this guy come up the stairs again. Drop the thing. Turn around. I'll sneak up behind him. Doop 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 doop, and then hide, so that when he turns around, oh, he even turns that way. I didn't even need to hide. He turns around the wrong way. All right, cool. Then let's come over here. Hey, you harvesting some agave? What are you doing? <gasps> Look, you can have fun by putting rocks in the food. Yay! Put rocks in everyone's food. So Prime and Rhyme wants to know what game I'm playing. This is called Elijo. It is a uh, sneaky, sneaky little indie game. Oh, with the padlock I can't get through. Dang. Oh, let's, uh, it's a stealth game where monks are trying to catch you as you try to sneak out of this place where you have been put by your sad and desperate mother. She apparently is dealing with some kind of, um, I don't know. Somebody has killed my father. Somebody's harassing my mother. We've lost our farm. We're under some kind of terrible threat. And so she's put me here with these monks to try to save my life. But I'm having none of it. Not interested in being saved. I want to sneak out of here because this place sucks. And uh, what I really want to be doing is helping my mother. So, okay, so... Bottom guy's be gone for a bit. This guy. Okay. Okay, while he's turned around, I'm going to get past him. And then I'm going to hide here. Okay. And then while he's looking that way, I think I need to get down into that hole. So once he turns around again, get down in the hole. Jump! Mm. Whee! 
12. <laughs> All right. So, oh, what is this up on the D-pad prompt? Oh, that's my rocks. That's right. So I'm betting I'm going to get other skills eventually that uh, join it. Okay. So, yeah. So I can't be seen while I'm in the shadows. But oftentimes to get where I need to go, I'll have to pass through these lit areas. So I have to make sure I do it when people are not looking at me. Oh, these guys are following a complicated path. Let's do this. Hide in the base. And then while they're going past me, run, 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 run. All right, checkpoint. I think this is the last level I'm going to do before I cut it off, but uh, so far this game is pretty fascinating. Like, they're doing a, a, a good job, uh, like, like, like a lot of the games that I've been playing recently, but they're really doing a good job of sort of stepping up the complexity very slowly. You know, basically letting me do all the cool things I can do with the limited set of powers I have at first, and then they're finding a really good pace to like introduce one thing at a time, like the rocks, or, you know, like, uh, like the ability to hide in a vase. I can hide in here too, huh? All right. So, when that guy is over on the left, I can. Okay, so it just fills that spotlight up. And I can run past him during at that moment. And if I've got time to hide, then I can hide. So, I wonder if I can make it here. Yes, okay, cool. That was kind of a flying leap, but I was really close to a uh, checkpoint, so not a big deal. Huh. Okay, so he's going to turn around. I'm going to pop out. Boop, 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 boop. All right, so yeah, good thing I got out of the spotlight there. Okay, so I've got the monk reading. I'm going to have to distract that monk. So I'm going to have to throw a rock probably over their head to get him to look away so that I can get past. All right, so let's throw a rock over there, maybe? Nope, still, still blocking my path. Okay, that didn't work. Oh, great, I'm trapped now, aren't I? Okay, good, just barely not trapped. Did that guy see me when he turns? No, it's barely not. All right, not sure what to, oh wait, I can pull, I can pull that thing, okay. I don't have to distract that monk, I can pull a thing instead. Let this guy go. down here, but I actually want to go this way because there's a child to inspire. I'm here to inspire the children. All children inspired, yes! I have inspired all of the children. Weirdly, this kind of reminds me a little bit of uh, the old Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom game and that I'm just like, you know, I've got my own objectives here, but one thing I want to do is just inspire as many children as I can along the way. Okay, so this person rotates, and I think I can get into that hiding place, and then out of the hiding place again. Okay, cool. This won't be bad. Do, 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 do. Hide. Unhide. Do, 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 do. And enter. Was this a dumbwaiter? Yes. The refectory. That feels like it should be dirty somehow. Um, all right, so we got through that first level. I think with this this technically counts as, as another level. It's interesting to see how where they put their level boundaries because this area doesn't look any different from the previous area. At least the the lighting and sort of the overall color scheme is the same. So it feels like it's the same level, but 
I finished getting all of the children, which is the major collectible in this game. I got all the children from the previous one, and now I assume there are more children to get here. Um, and so like, it's kind of an arbitrary line, it feels to me, drawn between these levels. It might be more significant later on. But uh, anyway, uh, so that is Eliho, uh, which... I mean, it's it's a very simple, straightforward stealth game, but I like that about it. You know, I like that it's just it presents me with these simple little puzzles that I can sort of watch for a minute, think through all of my you know tools that I have at my disposal, find a straightforward solution, and walk through it. Um, and kind of similar to Unto the End, it looks like it's it's stringent without being punishing, uh, in that they've you know they've tried to place checkpoints frequently enough that they can have a absolutely harsh. Um, set of rules where it's like if you get seen that's it you're screwed uh, there's not much you can do about it uh, and so you have to get it perfect you have to really solve the puzzle you can't just sort of fudge it uh, which is what makes it stringent but it's not punishing because if you fail what, you go back a few steps and you just gotta try again except in rare cases where you're like t following a weird path like I did at that, at that one point to try to get all of the collectibles then I kind of created for myself a situation where uh, it was a little bit more punishing, but it wasn't. That isn't sort of the natural state of the game, and I think that's really cool. So I can imagine from the fact that there was that little um, up in up in the upper left uh, upper right corner, there was that little um, D pad uh, that was sort of showing me that rocks are only one of the four skills I'm going to unlock over the course of the game. So I imagine the complexity of this game is probably going to ramp up as you get more tools in each situation. You have to look through it and think through more possibilities, more tools you had. Like that one moment where I was trying to use the rock to distract that monk, and uh, and, I for and I just wasn't thinking about the fact that there was a crate that I could pull to create a new path uh, in another part of the level. And, and, and it's going to keep being like that, I imagine. Like As they introduce more tools, I'm going to have to remember in each situation what tools I have my, at my disposal and remember to use them. It seems like that's going to be part of the, of the challenge of the game. But anyway, so uh, this video is wrapped up, so let's uh, switch over to this and uh, put some a subscribe button up, put some videos up, and we'll wrap up this YouTube video. But those of you who are watching me live in the stream, I'm going to keep going and play something else.